In this lecture, let's explore init and exit macros. These are called as function or variable section attributes. Basically, these are nothing but C macros, which are defined in include Linux init.h. You can open the init.h file and you will find these macros. So you can see that here, these are just C macros and uh, which uh, expand to uh, something called compiler directive. These are compiler directives or you can also call it as compiler attributes. For example, if you take the first case underscore underscore init, which expands into underscore underscore section dot init dot text. Here, this is called as a compiler directive, which directs the compiler to keep data or code in an output section called init. When you use this underscore underscore init macro with any function, then that function code will be placed in a section called dot init in the final kernel image. That's the meaning of that. Similarly, underscore underscore exit is also another C macro which expands to this compiler directive which directs the compiler to keep data or code in an output section called exit. Init and exit make sense only for static modules, remember that. I mean for built-in modules. Underscore underscore init is a macro which will be translated into compiler directive which you just saw which instructs the compiler to put the code in dot init section of the final ELF of Linux kernel image. Dot init section will be freed from the memory by the kernel during boot time once all the initialization functions gets executed. Since the built-in driver cannot be unloaded, its init function will not be called again until the next reboot. That's why there is no need to keep references to its init function anymore. For example, this is an init function. If this module is a built-in module, then this function will be called only one time, that is during the boot time. And once this function finishes, then why would you need this function? Because it's a static function, no one is going to call it. Don't you think it's better to remove the memory occupied by this function code? The kernel can remove it, right, from the memory, which will save some memory because there are 100,000 built-in modules. Removing some memory for 100 modules would be huge, isn't it? The kernel is going to save a lot of runtime memory. That's why underscore underscore init is a technique. By using that, we push that function into an init section, a separate section, which a kernel can free later. Let's continue with our discussion. So using underscore underscore init macro is a technique when used with a function, the kernel will free the core memory of that function after its execution. And also remember that it's an optional one. If you omit that, then no problem. You don't see any compilation warnings or errors. You can omit that. Similarly, you can use underscore underscore init data with variables that will be dropped after the initialization. Underscore underscore init is for code or for function. Underscore underscore init data is for variables, init variables. What is the use of underscore underscore exit? You know that for built in modules, cleanup function is not required. So when you use exit macro with a cleanup function, the kernel build system will exclude those functions during the build process itself underscore underscore exit acts as a marker for the build system to drop the cleanup function in build process itself. It will not be part of the final kernel image. Let's say you have three static modules, module 1.c, module 2.c and module 3.c. Let's say module 1.c's init function is m1 init function, module 2's init function is m2 init function, and module 3's uh, init function is m3 init function. Out of these three init functions, m1 init function and m2 init functions are tagged with init macros. 
when you trigger the kernel build, all these three modules will be part of the final Linux kernel image. In the final Linux kernel image, a new section will be created that's called dot init. And m1 init function and m2 init function will be part of that dot init section. That means the codes of m1 init function and m2 init function will be placed in the section called dot init by the compiler. When the kernel boots, the kernel calls m1 init function and m2 init function. And after that, kernel frees the memory which has been consumed by the dot init section. Because these functions will not get executed again during runtime of the kernel. That's the reason. What's the use of keeping that dot init section? It will get freed. But in this case, m3 init function will not be a part of dot init because it is not tagged with the macro underscore underscore init. So it will be a part of dot text region. That's why m3 init function will permanently consume the memory during runtime of the kernel. And also remember that all underscore underscore exit mark functions will be dropped by the kernel build system, hence they will not be part of the final image. I hope now you get the idea why init and exit macros are used. And uh, in the next lecture, I am going to cover module entry points registration. I'll see you in the next lecture.